Now there are a lot of people who say that we are not under the law because the law is in us. And if the law is in us, we are supposed to observe the law, observe the commands, observe the Torah. We are not under the law that, and the law is in us doesn't mean we need to observe the Torah. How is the law fulfilled? We are in Yeshua and Yeshua came to fulfill the law. He fulfilled, completed the law and we are in him and Yeshua is in us through the Holy Spirit. That is why the one who completed the law when he is in us, the law is completed in us. He completed it for us and now that we are in him, the requirements, the demands of the law have been satisfied because we are in the one who fulfilled the law. And see, read the words very carefully. What it is saying, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be, full, might be fully met, it does not say by us. It is saying the, the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us. We could never meet it. It is not by us. It is in us because we are in the one who completed it for us and he paid our penalty. So to say that we are not under the law but it is in us so we need to observe the Torah is not what the new covenant teaches. Plain and simple. Now we proceed further. Let us... Uh, and you know, at the end of Romans, uh, Romans chapter 8, at the end, he says that there is nothing can, that can separate us from the Messiah. Nothing. Once, that is why he starts it that we are in, we are under no condemnation, and he ends it that there is no separation from Yeshua. Now, Romans chapter 9, 10, 11 are about the doctrine of Israel and Israel being the past, present, and the future. We could go and try to understand regarding the Torah, regarding the law from there, but the main focus there is about Israel. So we would not be taking those chapters. Let me, let me uh, predict something, maybe, if I, if I may say so. People out there who say that the law is mandatory and they would, if, if, if at all they watch these sessions, they will say that he has not taken Romans chapter 9, 10, 11. There may be something over there that speaks of the law, which is the reason why he has not taken it. They may say that, but that is not the case. You could go and check for yourself. They speak of the doctrine of Israel, past, present, future, to go over there and not understand those things and understand only the law being uh, not applicable would, would, would not be eating the meat of those chapters. Just like we did not study Roman, uh, Ephesians chapter 3 because it, talk, it talks about the mystery in Christ, Gentiles being partakers, we skipped that chapter. We, what we are trying to do is we try to understand the non-applicability of the law. And we have taken, through Lord's help, we have taken several passages, several. And especially those that speak about the law. We uphold the law, not under the law, so on and so forth. We have taken so many passages. The only reason we are not taking Romans 9, 10, 11 is because it is focusing on something other than just the non-applicability of the Torah. Romans 12 and 12 and 13, we would be getting back to Romans 12 and Romans 13 later on, most probably in, in section 5 uh, and uh, Romans chapter 13, first half we would not be taken because that is about Christian politics. But we would, we would read a few verses from 12 and 13, second half. But what we are going to do now is we are going to, we're going to go to Romans chapter 14. An amazing chapter, very, very important for those who feel that certain things are even now mandatory, binding. So what we're going to do is before we enter Romans 14, which, which is going to tell us that certain uh, uh, days, all day, days don't matter. That's simple. He's going to say that. We'll, we'll read and we'll understand. But, but when you read the, 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 the book of Acts, you see that the, the apostles and the early uh, messianics, early Christians, uh, were observing the Moedim, the days. So let us read those verses and let us see uh, what is going on, what is being taught in the New Testament. Especially Romans chapter 14, what, what it is teaching us. Let us see. We are going to read a few verses. Acts chapter 12, verses 3 and 4. When he saw that this met with the approval among the Jews, he proceeded to, to seize Peter also. This happened during Chagham Azod. After arresting him, he put him in prison, handing him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. So, so the, the feasts are mentioned over here. Let's see Acts chapter 27 verse 9. Much time had been lost and sailing had already become dangerous because by now it was after Yom Kippur. Okay, he, he's, he's talking about uh, Yom Kippur over here. 
uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 8. Therefore, let us keep the festival, not with the old bread leavened with malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 19. Circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing. Keeping God's commands is what counts. Uh, then there's Matthew 24, 20. Pray that your flight will not take place in winter or on Shabbat. Lord is speaking about Shabbat over here. He's talking about... Uh, we, we're going to understand this verse uh, in just a, a few minutes. Hebrews 4. Uh, amazing passage over there. Verses 9 to 11. There remains then a Sabbath is most for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest... Uh, also rest from their works, just as God did from His. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest, so that no one will perish by following the example of disobedience. Uh, Acts chapter 20, verses 5 and 6. These men went on ahead and waited uh, for us at Troas, but we sailed from Philippi. After the, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and five days later joined them at Troas, where we stayed seven days. And Acts chapter 20, verse 16. Uh, Paul deci had decided to sail past Ephesus to avoid spending time in the province of Asia, for he was in a hurry to reach Jerusalem, if possible, by the day of Shavuot. When you read these, these verses, you, you realize that the apostles were observing the feast. Let, let's let's just, just breeze by Romans 14 and then see all of these things in detail. Romans chapter 14 is about the weak and the strong unity within the community about those who are weak in the faith and those who are strong and how they need to be, they, they need to uh, stay together, how they need to live together. So Romans 14, accept the one whose faith is weak without quarreling over disputable matters. And which are these disputable matters? Let's see. Uh, one person's faith allows him to eat anything, but another whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. The one who eats everything you know, he's saying anything, every, he's saying uh, in verse 2, one person's faith allows him to eat anything. You know, the, and, 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 and in verse 3, he's saying the one who eats everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not. And the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does. For God has accepted them. There's so much over here, okay? Uh, who are you to judge someone else's servant to their own master, servant stand or fall? And they will stand, for Adonai will, is able to make them stand. Amen. Uh, uh, verses 5 and 6. One person considers one day more sacred than another. Another considers every day alike. You see here what he's saying? There, uh, Holy Spirit, there in, in, uh, in Acts, they, they are celebrating the feast. But here, Holy Spirit is saying through Paul that one day is sacred. For a, for a certain person, and for another, every day is alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. Whoever regards one day as special does so to Adonai. Whoever eats meat does so to the Lord, for they give thanks to God. And whoever abstains does so to, to the Lord and gives thanks to God. So now let us see, now we let us uh, understand the verses that we read before. And then... Uh, come back to Romans and, and, and understand the feast and also in detail understand Kashrut, dietary laws, which would be after the Moedim aspect has been, Moedim and Shabbat aspect has been dealt with. Then we'll get into Kashrut. So uh, we read, you know, we read verse, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verse 8.